In this video I want to pay some attention to the so-called blocking oscillator. It belongs to the category from relaxation oscillators. And here you see the circuit on the breadboard. Here you see the supply voltage, the waveform at the primary coil and the load. That's a white LED. You can see that it uh, brights up, that it lights up very bright at 0.7 volts, and that has all to do with this circuit. That is in fact a voltage converter, an oscillator, and in this case it works on 370 kilohertz. Here you see the circuit. Perhaps it looks difficult, but it isn't at all. The ferrite rod is here. The windings are um, the primary 30 turns, secondary 150 turns, the back coupling coil 70 turns, and here the used transistor. I've used the BD139 by purpose because it can handle approximately 80 volts or 50 volts on its base. That's important. The BC547B that I've used earlier broke down due to the high peak voltages on the base. These peak voltages are delivered by the back coupling coil. It's a resonant circuit. Here are the pin connections. So let's see what happens when we uh, change the supply voltage. Happens in terms of um, waveform and output voltage. Now it's 0 0.7, now it is 2.5, 3.3. Quite chaotic waveform. I can analyze it better, but that will take too much time. And you can see that the white LED lights up very, very bright. So that's one of the good properties from the circuit. On the other hand, it creates a lot of harmonics. And that's more or less a disadvantage, but a disadvantage that is uh, good to handle, I think. The primary coil and the secondary coil, there is in between um, a relation, a ratio. Here it's 30, this is 150, so five times. When we have here one volt, the voltage is here approximately five volt. Perhaps um, that's far too simple, but anyway, I want to give an indication. Uh, and because of the fact that it is resonant, there's also a kind of um, resonance effect that brings the output voltage here to a far high, far more higher value than you expect. But this is a this is a rule of thumb. The ratio between this coil and this coil sets the output voltage, and the back coupling coil has only the aim to send enough signal back to the transistor. And this is the coupling cap. All is frequency dependent. When you mount here a capacitor, the frequency will go down. When you do that here, also the frequency will go down. But that are all things that you can do more uh, when you want to do experiments. The circuit, by the way, is not new. Here you see an old book from the 1950s, television technology, analog television of course in those days. Uh, the hiccup oscillator as capacitive sawtooth oscillator. And here you see three old schematics with tubes that do the same hiccup oscillator. And here and here and on YouTube you can find a lot of circuits about Yule thieves and um, in fact that are often also hiccup oscillators. 
here you see how the um, voltage rises uh, in relation to the value from the charge capacitor C1 and it's about this schematic anyway when you want to do experiments interesting circuit um, you can connect here um, a LED, a neon tube and for a neon tube for instance make more turns here for instance for instance 700 or 800 to get a very high voltage here want to pay uh, more attention to the circuit in a second video by the way it always works when it doesn't work reverse these two connections that has to do with the phase from the signal that is sent back into the base from the transistor. With the potentiometer you set the frequency somewhat and with this cap, the back coupling capacitor, when you change it also the frequency will change.